President and CEO Jim Ryan does an interview with Japanese publication Famitsu, and he won't believe what Jimbo had to say. Plus, Marvel's Spider-Man 2 is just around the corner for PlayStation, and the voice actor who plays Miles Morales let something slip, and then Insomniac came out of nowhere like Randy Orton to squash those rumors before they started, and Sony's planning on more acquisitions soon? All this and much, much more in today's edition of the Salty PlayStation News Report. Cue that intro. What's up, PlayStation Nation? Welcome to another episode of the Salty PlayStation News Report. Hope you guys are doing fantastic wherever you are around the world. If it's your first time here to the channel, welcome. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you can stay up to date with all things PlayStation and PlayStation 5. So, Jim Ryan's back at it. That Gordon Ramsay looking mother effer. He's back on the prowl, baby. He's made himself clear that they're not taking any prisoners when it comes to PlayStation and their dominance in the game gaming industry. This much was made clear during the Activision acquisition proceedings. Multiple rumors have come out since then talking about Jim Ryan's desire to move forward with the PlayStation brand and grow it to heights it hasn't seen yet, which is insane because they're pretty much dominating on every metric when it comes to moving hardware and software. But Jim Ryan did an interview with Famitsu, which is a famous Japanese publication, and he had interesting, interesting things to say about the PlayStation 5. And one of the most important things has to do with their desire to move PlayStation games to PC. And if in fact, they're gonna to continue to keep the time period in between releases. The PlayStation 5 had significant issues and hurdles to overcome when it came to the beginning of the generation. Major supply chain issues for the hardware in the beginning, combine that with scalpers. And we had a very difficult situation for players to get their hands on the hardware. Fast forward to 2023 and the supply chain issues have significantly improved. In fact, you can go find PlayStation 5s in your local retailers, which is insane to think about. Like if you took me back to 2020 and you said, hey, there's going to be some PlayStation 5s in stores, I would have called you crazy because it just didn't exist that way. But yes, we're seeing significant improvements in the supply chain. Jim mentioned specifically that that will continue to improve. When he was talking about supply chain improvements, he mentioned Japan as a market specifically. There's a lot of naysayers out there that say that Sony Japan Japan has kind of de-emphasized the significance of that market, but he came out and was clear as day that the Japanese market is an integral part of the PlayStation culture and is one of the central countries. And he thinks it's very special and important to be able to transmit in Japan within the PlayStation brand. If you guys, again, are naive to the situation, there are countless deals going on between Sony Japan and Japanese studios. One of the biggest titles coming out this year is Final Fantasy 16, and that is a Japanese title with a Japanese studio creating it. So do not worry. PlayStation is committed to the Japanese market and Japanese titles. And that's awesome to hear. If you're fans of Final Fantasy, Street Fighter, Resident Evil, Monster Hunter, Wild Hearts, Elden Ring, tons of titles out there. So it's good to hear that. He also stated that cooperative relationships with partners are essential to the success of the games that they're making. He mentioned specifically two titles, Rise of Ronin and Kojima Productions, Death Stranding 2. He specifically mentioned that they are main PlayStation 5 titles and that they're working with partners is essential to making the games big successes. The conclusion of the interview mentioned PlayStation VR 2 and how that is important to the company as well as producing other projects that are outside the video game realm, specifically movies and television. And what is the most important that was mentioned here is the PC versions and their future of Sony Interactive Entertainment titles. This is a big sticking point. One of the differentials between the two companies there are a lot sony playstation puts a emphasis on its console and its console players it does not create a second class citizenship for the console like xbox xbox is pretty much forgotten its console players does not care about them pc is its bread and butter now it's been clear as day for a while now and people were worried that playstation was going that route simply because jim ryan is a business guy there's lots of players on the pc side but rest assured he finally came out and said what the future is when it comes to PC 
versions of games in the PC market. This was the question here. That sounds exciting. They finally have a question about gaming PC market in recent years. The gaming PC market has grown in Japan as well. From Sony Interactive's point of view, the number of PlayStation 5's rivals will increase, but please tell us your frank thoughts on excitement of gaming PC market in Japan. Jim Ryan stated, I think that's a very good thing when considering the multifaceted development of game IP. PCs are indispensable for allowing more people to enjoy games in a variety of ways. Now, I'm laughing is because that's pretty much status quo for Phil Spencer. We want to have more people play in more ways in the ways they want. He says, I think more the better. Sony Interactive Entertainment will continue to actively release PC versions in the future. He said they're going to be proactive. While well, I'm happy to have more options, I'll also like to see more PlayStation 5 exclusive titles from enthusiastic game fans. So Ryan said, we fully understand the importance of the PlayStation 5 exclusive titles. As I said earlier, PlayStation Studios main responsibility is to have people enjoy gaming experiences using the latest PlayStation. We're increasing the number of PlayStation 5 exclusive titles and staggering the release of PC versions. I often have the opportunity to ask game fans for their opinions and when I ask them about the time lag, they say that selling the PC version two or three years after the release of the PlayStation version is acceptably favorable. There are many. So you regularly set up the opportunity to hear the opinions of game fans? He asked. Ryan said, it's a community that we should cherish the most. We will continue to listen to the voices of game fans and develop various titles in a multifaceted manner. So PlayStation is listening. They're not just doing whatever they want. Jim Ryan has heard fans speak out on the importance of making the console number one, and they'll continue to do that. Now, you're not going to see these games released on PC for two to three years, and I think that's a fantastic model to follow there. You do the waterfall method. You get your money through the PlayStation. You make that the emphasis. You sell a buttload of consoles, buttload of games, and when those have met their run and you put those in subscription service and they, they don't sell much anymore, you give them to the PC beggars over there and you go about your business. But I want to know from you guys, what do you think of this Jim Ryan interview? What do you think that PlayStation still needs to do to improve their place in the market? What would you like to see? And what do you think of his comments on PC and kind of staggering more the PC releases and making more PlayStation 5 exclusives going forward? Let's talk about it. In other news... I don't know if you guys have heard this, but there's a superhero called Spider-Man. He's kind of a big deal. That being said, Spider-Man could not be more popular right now in culture. Into the Spider-Verse Part 2 is going to be dropping later this summer. And oh yeah, uh, a little exclusive for the PlayStation 5 is dropping Spider-Man 2. And honestly, I couldn't be more excited for this game. If you guys played the first one and Miles Morales, you'll know why. This is one of the best superhero video games of all time, franchise-wise. Insomnia kitted out the ballpark with the gameplay, with the story, with the graphics, just has it all. One of the top selling franchises already on the PlayStation platform. Now, it's already been revealed that Miles Morales and Peter Parker are gonna be teaming up against villains like Venom. Spider-Man 1 was exclusively Peter Parker. There was Miles Morales in there, but you just had some like sneaking around missions. And then in Miles Morales, you did have Peter Parker, but he was not involved in the game. Well, in this one, they're gonna team up. Miles Morales is voiced by actor Najee Jeter, and he has seemed to pull a Tom Holland when asked some questions in an interview at the SAC anime panel. Someone asked him about co-op and this was his response. I believe it has been. I think it has been announced. I don't know if it's been announced or not, but I think so. The actor also teases that symbiotes will be everywhere in the sequel. Later on in the video clip, he talks about Miles getting clever with his webs in Marvel Spider-Man 2. We were like, okay, what can we do to gradually show the progression of him? And that was swinging and flipping in the air. You know, his acro Robotics, but yeah, we got a lot more funny stuff because he gets clever with his webs in this next one. He gets real clever, so y'all stick around for part two because y'all gonna be like, what? He's getting the hang of it now? So after this interview came out, a shitstorm hit the internet like it usually does. Multiple articles were being put out that Spider-Man was gonna have co-op. I tweeted out that I was called a madman when I said that the game was gonna have co-op. And then Insomniac came in like Randy Orton and just out of nowhere crushed my hopes and dreams. They were asked in a tweet if Marvel Spider-Man 2 is going to be a co-op game in Sonic Games, and they replied simply, nope, it's an epic single-player adventure, so there you have it. It's going to be single-player. I'm sure there's going to be an AI co-op partner, whether it's Miles or Peter or whatever, or if you're going to be the symbiote or Venom, whatever you want. It's just not going to be co-op. 
and for a lot of people that's music to their ears insomniac also commented on the ability that they have to ratchet it up when it comes to how crazy this game is going to be because it's going to be a playstation 5 exclusive and i am beyond excited to see what they reveal at the playstation showcase on wednesday just to let you guys know i'm going to be doing a live reaction so stay tuned to the channel but i want to know from you guys what do you think of naji jeter's comments about co-op and then insomniac squashing those rumors would you like to see co-op in a game like this are you happy that it's just not going to be there let's talk about it and finally in the last bit of news it looks like sony isn't done with acquisitions and mergers this information comes from the financial times and hidoki totoki i've talked about him multiple times svp at cfo at sony says there's plans that are underway to secure an additional eight billion ish dollars for a proactive merger and acquisitions now i know i know before you hit me up in the comments section i know you guys are pretty much tired of hearing all these acquisitions rumors news etc because of the abk stuff but it's just part of the industry right now consolidation is not my favorite thing when it comes to these billion dollar companies trillion dollars for some instances but that's just the way this industry is going and when it comes to playstation they need to be proactive and scoop up some of these publishers on the smaller end and developers because at this point they've really only focused on smaller end acquisitions the havens of the world fostering relationship and then buying those studios hasn't been extremely big pause but when it comes to microsoft they're focused on the shotgun approach of buying entire publishers they've started off with bethesda they're trying to acquire abk so there's a different approach there but i think that sony is very aggressive when it comes to their space in gaming and they understand what is at risk when it comes to a lot of these acquisitions they wouldn't set aside extra money if they didn't plan to use it and eight billion dollars is nothing to scoff at now immediately you probably think to some of the japanese publishers out there your capcoms of the world the square enixes any of those and honestly with the relationship that playstation does have with these studios with these publishers i just think it makes too much sense for them to acquire a capcom or a square enix or any of these other japanese studios out there you name them list them off but the timing needs to be right and the price needs to be right i think square enix is just that perfect publisher and i wouldn't be surprised if we get news sometime shortly that they have acquired square enix now nothing would change really when it comes to the business side with square enix because playstation has such a good relationship and so many timed exclusives or exclusives in general not much would be different they would just own the publisher and they'd go about their business kind of like destiny and bungie etc but i want to know from you guys what do you think of sony set aside an extra eight billy for acquisitions what do you want to see them use that towards what studio slash publisher would you like to see them snatch up let's talk about it that's it for today's edition of the saltiest playstation news report i hope you guys enjoyed it if you're new make sure to subscribe hit the bell icon so you can stay up to date with all things playstation and playstation 5 like i said i'm doing that live reaction to the playstation showcase on wednesday so hit that bell icon so you can join in the live chat and just have a blast it's pretty much like christmas morning for gamers it's gonna be crazy crazy good time hope you guys have a great day we'll catch you on the next one and as always stay salty my friends